Before I start this video, I want to thank Jackaboy for making my new character stills. I wanted to make a new change for this year, and I plan on keeping the stills for the rest of 2019. Go check out his channel, link in the description below. That being said, my last game review was received very well, so much so that I decided to make another video game review. Regardless, this game set off an interesting reaction out of me. Many people seem to like it, and I don't blame them, because opinions are opinions. However, once upon a time I decided to look it up on Google, and I'm gonna say this. Super Mario 3D Land is one of the most successful 3DS games of all time. It has sold over 12.22 million copies as of September of 2018, and it was the 6th best selling game on the system. It was one of the top 3DS games in 2011. And 2011 was a decent year for video games. This made sense when I looked at the reviews. This is easily one of the most unique Mario games I've seen in a long time. And similar to Sonic Lost World, this is Mario's first adventure on a 3D game. So, go figure, I guess. Now, unlike my Sonic Lost World video, I'm not going to structure the video with the pros and cons. I'm just gonna go by point by point, without any transition cards. So with that said, let us begin the freaking video. So the plot is as basic as you can get. Bowser, being the loveless loser that he is, kidnaps Peach and good old Mario has to save her. That's really it. The short term plot is basic and unoriginal, but you generally don't play Mario games for the story. The cutscenes in the game are pretty hysterical to look at. The cutscenes are certainly one of the highlights of the game, especially the cardboard cutout part at the end. That never gets old. Now the game itself plays like a 2D Mario game. It doesn't control 100% like a 2D game, but it definitely has a strong resemblance. Unlike Super Mario 64, you don't have a life bar. You get hit once and you're dead. A rather anticlimactic way to die. You control Mario with the circle pad and like Super Mario 64 DS, you hold down the X or Y button to pick up some speed. And thank goodness you no longer need a D-pad to do so. The controls are fairly similar to the previous titles, only you can't do a punch and kick or the triple jump moves. Luckily I managed to complete the entire game without these controls, so yeah. Now in the 3D sections, platforming can be a bit stiff for my taste. It can get pretty difficult to balance yourself without falling into a bottomless pit. Returning items from the new Super Mario Brothers are the Mushroom, the Fire Flower, and the Star Man. Returning from Mario 3 is the Tanuki suit and the Boomerang Bro. Contrary to Mario 3, more specifically with the Tanuki suit, you cannot fly, but instead it only gives you a little bit of air time. So yeah, these power-ups, except for one, are really useful to use and certainly something to make your experience a hell of a lot easier. In addition to the old power-ups, we also have returning enemies. Goombas, Koopas, Bullet Bills, Pariah Plants, Pokies, the Poison Mushroom, you name it. In this game, however, they are different from their predecessors. For example, if a Goomba looks at you, it will charge towards you, almost as if he is ready for battle or something. Seems a bit risky since the thing can literally die by being stomped on or something. The game also allows you to go from state to state. That's the way I like it, and I'm glad that Nintendo did not mess it up too badly. At the end of each world, you get to fight Bowser. Pretty standard stuff. And in the middle of each world, you fight either Boom Boom or Pom Pom. Personally, I find Pom Pom to be the easiest to defeat, despite her throwing a boomerang at you, it's easy enough to dodge, simply because the boomerang itself doesn't go very fast. Boom Boom is basically normal mode, however, it can be a bit difficult to get on his head due to him spinning so frequently. Lastly, Bowser is certainly the hardest of the bosses. Granted, I'm glad that Bowser is the final boss of each world, but they could have at least added less obstacles and removed the side-scrolling elements. Regardless of all of that, you can unlock Luigi, who is just as good as he was in Super Mario 64 DS, so things aren't too complex here. Now, in addition to this game having a world A, there is also a world B in which the levels are designed to be significantly more difficult. Lucky for me, I managed to get all the way to World 8B, and I haven't gotten past that, so I guess luck passed m me by? I know that was a terrible interjection, but what can you do anyways? Now, the music is fairly catchy for a 3DS game, but at times it can get pretty forgettable, especially in the case of the first level of the game. Nonetheless, the castle themes were great for 3DS standards, and good on Mahito Yokoda for making the soundtrack the way it has to be. Some of the music utilizes soundtrack from the original Mario games, which could be seen as lazy, but it's not the worst Nintendo has to offer. Pro tip, if this game feels difficult for you, then you should use the Koopa Shell method in World 1 Level 2, because you are going to need as many lives as you can possibly get, specifically for the journey and the special stages. 
Trust me. Now, for a game that was released in November of 2011, it's certainly great for a handheld experience. The presentation, while not as good as Super Mario 64 or Galaxy, are still fine to handle and I no longer see as many problems as I used to when I first played the game. In terms of level design, it ain't the best Miyamoto has to offer, but putting aside that, the first few levels were a breath of fresh air and I could replay them over and over and over again. I could only hope that a new and improvised sequel is in the near future. But if I had to give this game a score, it would be a 6.8 out of 10. That's of course for the 3DS game and not the Wii U version as a whole. So if you are looking for an interesting 3D handheld game to pick up, then by all means purchase this game. You might even see something in this game that I don't. I'm planning more videos on the future, but until then, I'm out of here.